Marchintosh 2023. So how was that sound made? Well, let's go to the button tool and open up this button and look at the script. And this is HyperTalk telling it how to play the theme from Star Trek The Next Generation. So it plays a boing at tempo 200 and B flat, B flat 3 eighth note. And then it goes to the harpsichord at tempo 200 and plays uh, the ba ba ba, the notes, uh, the same notes, uh, eighth notes three times. And it goes back between boings and harpsichords. And it's when you do a mouse up, so you're pressing the mouse down, then going up, and it triggers this event, which runs the script. That's hyper talk for you. And uh, let's see what this has. Um, it just has on mouse app go to card 2987. Oh boy. So let's see what, what uh, that. Uh, what we want to do is go back to browse mode which is tools the hand and click bill atkinson and that takes us to the first card of our stack okay can people see my macintosh yes it's march and uh, it's atkinson. march so yeah good good recognition so i'm showing you hypercard because this month is march and tosh could you still see the screen as i move it around um yeah. No, I'm 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 seeing oh. your mouse move, but I'm not seeing oh. the screen move around. Okay, uh, but uh, you see Mini VMAC and you see March and Tosh 2023. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, so this is a hypercard stack that I created for March and Tosh, which is a cute little celebration for vintage computer enthusiasts. And uh, the theme I decided was to look at Star Trek Picard season three, where they're bringing the whole cast of, from 30 years ago back together. And uh, what would I want to it put in this hypercard stack. Well, I wanted to use Ted Nelson's idea of ZZ structures and uh, to help explain ideas like going password and negword. So like if the, the first episode's linked to the next the episode two, which is linked to episode three, then if I want to go from three to two, I'm going negword. If I go two to three, I'm going password. So now let's go into one of these episodes. Now, the things that interest me are music and props and others, but there's also the concept of having a ring. So like if you wanted to go from part one to part two to part three, you could create a ring like that. And then when I add episode four, I'll insert it at the end of the ring. So that's one concept in Ted Nelson's structure. And he has dimension. So like, let's look at the dimension of music. Okay, so here is the first song in episode one. I don't want to set the world on fire. So there's information about that I may be interested in exploring. I may have other dimensions for the composer who performed it, the lyrics, whatever I want. But let's see the next song. Now it seems that our love affair is through. So the same dimensions could be linked to that song. To It's really user navigation. And that's the third song in that episode. So Eric, uh, just a, a pause for a second. So you folded the work you're doing on ZZ on Zippered Lists, which is Ted Nelson's work. Right inside of hypercard which is in running in an emulator here right that's really cool keep going yep. sorry okay so now like so i'm interested in props so one of the props we see in the first episode is beverly crusher's corcaroli five award well unless you have a whole understanding of the history of how she got that award here you could go to the a dimension called the next generation episode and you know it's the episode called allegiance and then you could get more information on that episode and uh, maybe even link to a, a video if you have access to that so let's see the other props so captain's log star date 43996.2 does anybody remember what happened on that date I, you know, I have imperfect recall of Star Trek. <laughs> That's from the best of both worlds, part one, when uh, Captain Picard was assimilated by the Borg. So, yeah, and then Picard's recipe. You, you would think, you would think we should all remember that day. <laughs> yeah, so. of course, you know, yeah. and when did he get a recipe flute? Well, that was the episode, The Inner Light. I think it's the end of season six, but I could, but it's showing you the flexibility that you would have with dimensional navigation. And, um, 
the other thing I'm experimenting with is like, say I could I have a QR code pop up on the emulator or on a Mac and you could scan it with your phone and get a link. So I'm experimenting in HyperCard. Could I generate my own QR code? And then for fun, like, I don't know that your screen share is giving us audio, so I don't think oh. we heard what you just played. Okay, fine. Um, that when you was... start, when you in Zoom, when you start screen share, you have to You're right. add, add audio. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's uh, HyperCard music, so I wrote a script in HyperCard to play that music. <laughs> so awesome. the, the yeah, okay, but you get the idea. So here is a thirty-year-old technology running in twenty twenty-three and being used for something. So I'm just showing you the creativity that can emerge from going back in time and bringing it forward. And, and it's amazing what they're doing with Star Trek, taking 30 year old characters and giving them new life. <laughs> um, Eric, that was uh, like very fast and mind blowing yep. and super cool. Uh, second, Paul Roney, a French entrepreneur, yes. the founder of Cosmic and I are rebooting the Tools for Thinking podcast as nice. Hyper Talk is like the it. name we're giving it because a few people in the world understand that HyperTalk was the programming language yes. of HyperCard, but other people might think, oh, this is like conversations about hyper stuff, let's join. And oh. we're trying to motivate people to come in and be hosts of a strings of episodes, like four mm -hmm. or six episodes and basically propose those and host them. And if you felt like doing that around what you just done and shown, that would be like extremely on point and like right in because you're hybridizing two important of these historical visions of what the computer might do, hypercard and, and zigzag. Yeah, uh, and just another thing I want to mention, I'm also looking at high time, H-Y-T-I-M-E. It's mm -hmm. an international standard for hyper uh, media and um, topic maps, which Jack Park has written books about. And uh, we, one of our network friends, Steve Newcomb, was uh, one of the developers of high time. Oh, Turns cool. Out, which is oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that book, that name. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to bring some of the old back in because we had some great ideas in the 90s. Um, thank you so much. That was like the best show and tell uh, <laughs> in, a very, in a very long time. Really appreciate it, Eric. OK, thank you, guys and gals. Um, if you want to play with this stack, you can go to archive.org slash details slash hyperpicard2023 and click the emulate it button. And now, magically, you have a classic Macintosh that is going to run hypercard. And here it comes. Yes. Welcome to Macintosh. Okay, and then... You have your little wait while the operating system loads, and you have a mouse pointer. There's your watch, the good old watch mouse pointer. And you have a HyperCard System 7 floppy disk, and Eric work, another floppy disk, and a waste basket. So let's double click. So you got to move your mouse, double click the system disk, run this HyperCard, open that folder, and Find the program. Here's HyperCard. Okay, let it boot up. The good old days. While you wait, you get a cup of coffee, and then your program will be ready. But here it's all doing it with WebAssembly, amazingly. Okay, so now you are in HyperCard, and you could explore everything here. Now do a file, open stack. And where is the stack? It should be on, you know, let's see, yeah, so I would go to desktop and then the Eric Work floppy disk and Picard. You double click that and it opens Picard. Okay, it's a little earlier version of the stack, but that's fine. Um, so like here, you can uh, check um, the QR code thing. You can go, you could play the music. You have to turn the uh, sound on to hear it, or maybe not. Um, yeah, the emulation may not show it, but uh, one thing I want to point out here, every card is a ZZ cell, and every ZZ cell is in every dimension. So Ted's original idea was to have, like, cells where you have text or graphics or whatever, and um, the dimensions, even though you're defining dimensions like D episode and other dimensions like uh, D music, D props, 
every card is in every dimension, but most of them are unlinked. But like this card is linked into the music and it's the first card of this rank. And then when I click this arrow, it goes to the second card of the rank in D music in that dimension. So within a dimension, you can only have a pause word neighbor and a neg word neighbor. So here's a pause word neighbor. And then you go to the next one. This one only has a neg word neighbor. So think of it like um, three connected rectangles in either horizontally or vertically. So the rendering of the view of the data is up to the programmer. Okay, so like here, flipping dimensions should be really easy to do and uh, navigation should be intuitive. Okay, so um, here you can go to the button tools and uh, you can go into any button and see more info and the scripts are just navigating to the cards. So here it's going to card 5033. Okay, but um, what I just wanna show you is if you just walk through the cards, it's like throwing up a deck of cards and letting them land wherever they go. So here, if we go back to browse, okay, and you flip through, um, yeah, here's a card that's not linked to anything, just a Mac Paint drawing. And then uh, here's Beverly Crusher, Captain's Log. So you could see like the order in which these cards were added, but uh, there's no real connection between the order of the cards in HyperCard and the linking. What's important are the links that you can just uh, go from one link to another as you please. So you could go here and then you go to what you're interested in. And that is HyperCard for you. And you could feel free, you could edit the stack, you can add a new card. So let's see, that's under edit. Um, yeah, so new card, you have to go into uh, authoring. Let's see, if you go to button, let's see, can I do an edit? Yeah, there are certain permission levels. So um, in the emulator, uh, you may not get it all, but uh, Feel free to download and experiment. There's an ISO image file, an 800K floppy disk image. Have fun. This demo was powered by Mini VMAC, which is a Macintosh emulator. And also it's running HyperCard version 2.1. So let's see here about HyperCard. These are all the people we have to thank for the amazing work they did between 1987 and 1991, which allowed this demo to be made. More people, more people. A day of acquaintance and then the longer span of custom, but first the hour of astonishment.